Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is, we're in October 2017, this is B&B what Rewind, and I am your host, James Lodge Jr., where we talk all things your favorite soap, Bold and the Beautiful, and we also catch up with actors who have been on the show, who are on the show, and what they're doing now, what they're talking about now. And I have an actress, I mean, she is daytime royalty, and she is part of the first family of Bold and the Beautiful. She's on other soaps, of course, Wanted to Live, Sunset Beach, y and uh, She's also, I saw listed on her, I think she's an equestrian. I love horses. We're going to talk about that in a second, too. Uh, and we're going to talk about her time as Kristen Forster Dominguez on A Bold and the Beautiful. She's come back off and on for different events. Last she was on for a Zendi, her son Zendi's wedding on the show. Uh, but she was part of some important storylines back in the day, and I'll talk about that also. She's also the author of this book called Breaking the Perfect Ten, where she was talking about, several years ago, talking about the casting couch in the Hollywood system that's not good. Well, we're going to talk to her, and I'm very excited. I'm very honored to have her on my show, because I really am a fan of her and her work. Tracy Lindsay Melchior, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on. It's my pleasure. I want to first get to the horse thing, because oh, okay. I want to share a quick story, a little quick story for you. I love okay. horses. I love horseback riding, the whole thing. When I was 10 years old, I was raised here in Los Angeles, but I have family all over the place. That's how I got into horses. Um, but I rode to Hollywood Park. This is, as I'm aging myself, this is back in the 70s, um, when they actually had a racetrack. And yeah. I wrote to them as a 10-year-old, back when you had to write letters, <laughs> and said, I love horses, and oh my God, I want to, I want to be with horses, and I, whatever I wrote in the letter. Someone got back to me from Hollywood Park, and I was granted a private tour of the stables, I met jockey. I mean, it was one of the best experiences of my entire life. I mean, I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Got a program, um, and it was just like, they were so sweet. And so I was like, I can't, and I live in Hollywood Park, Hollywood Park now, it's kind of facing a whole different thing now, but I will never forget, I love horses. I mean, how, how long have you been into the equestrian world and horses? Well, my entire life, and I will have to extend a horsey invitation to you or something, <gasps> Yes, it is. I do. But, Yay. Um, yeah. Well, I grew up on a horse farm in Colorado. My mom was into horses. Mm. And actually, I own a horse right now. <laughs> I've always had to have a horse. Wow. Um, and the horse that I have right now is the granddaughter of my childhood horse. Oh, my so God. I, I had one that. of my childhood horse's kids. And then when he passed away, I got one of her grandkids. That's so. amazing. Yeah, so they're like family. Oh, um, but horses are how I got in the business. Um, how did that? Okay, how did that happen? <laughs> well, my very first um, Screen Actors Guild job was as a stunt double for an Old Spice commercial. Oh my god! And yeah, so our audition, we had to ride a horse bareback. Wow! So they ended up selecting somebody else as the lead. Okay. But they asked me to be the double. So I showed up on the set, and the makeup artist started doing my makeup, and I was like, his name is Cochise, he was full um, Apache Indian. Ooh, wow. He's the coolest guy. Yeah. yeah. But he starts doing my makeup, and I'm like, Cochise, I'm the stunt double, they can't see my face. And he's like, what? You're the double? You're pretty? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm, thank you, I'm the double. Anyway, this other actress kept going on and on about how she paid cash for her Mercedes, and I was making payments on my Honda, and I'm like, whatever, I'm getting into the screen actor's guild. <laughs> And, uh, so, anyway, next thing I know, she goes out to start setting up the scene, and on, on the radio, they're like, get us the double out here. Oh, wow. So I go out there, and she's, like, shoulders down in disgrace, getting off the horse, and they're like, let's get our double up there and see if she can make this horse run. So being the show-off that I am, and growing up on a horse ranch, and not riding my whole life, I just swung up bareback without a leg up or anything. I can just grab the mane and hop yeah. on. And I take off, and they're like, wait! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, anyway, they take me back down, and they put me in the makeup chair, and Coach E starts doing my makeup again. And I'm like, Coach E, we talked about this. And he's <laughs> like, no, girl, you're the lead now. See that van? She's going home. Wow. <laughs> that's, so that's amazing. How I got into, it was such a cool story. Yeah. But, and, and that's my encouragement to people that want to get into acting. It's like, don't feel like everything has to be about acting. Hone some special skills because mm -hmm. the more diverse you are, the better, you know, um, the more opportunities you'll get. 
Well, it's funny. I interviewed an actor um, who told, I forgot which actor it was, but he told me how he used to sell cattle. And he made enough money to come to Hollywood to act. He said he didn't want to come, like, he didn't want to, come to Hollywood to just be broke. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he came to Hollywood, he came to Hollywood, made enough money to go to acting classes and buy an apartment, get an apartment. Like, it was like, so you're right. It's like, you never know what will lead you in. For me, yeah. I, I found some business. I was, I was an insurance educator. I was, that's what I was doing before I started this. And, and I was doing some event planning. But it was like, that's not the business. Well, someone saw me and said, you should be on television. Like, literally said that to me. Um, you then, have a great face. And, 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 and a great voice. So thank you. I can see that. But it's one of those things, but you're doing something else you never know, and that's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Yeah, have, have others, have, have, be well rounded. Have other things going on in your life, and you never know exactly. what's your attract. Exactly. Yeah, you know what you're attracting. I think that's well, a great and what's thing. Good about, what's good about that, too, is like when you're well rounded and have other stuff going on, it doesn't define you, and it's not yes. as devastating when the phone's not ringing for your next audition, you know, and you become so depressed. Oh, yeah, because this business is not for the faint at heart. It is not, no. not, not, and you know that. Uh, yeah. Now, I want to also want to ask you, because you went to school, you went to Cal- Colorado State University. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I want to ask you, how important, as you look back on now, was your education to the business? Well, I will say I did not stay long. Okay. My parents... Um, they didn't pay my tuition. <laughs> they ended up not... Yeah, I came home to, like, a pink note on my door. Oh and my I, I regret, I largely regret, and I try and tell every young person, instead of going and trying to get other financial aid resources and that sort of thing, um, I just was like, fine. You know, I was like, yeah. kind of stick it to my parents. And I won't go to college. And um, they were having financial issues, and couldn't pay it but then I just you know gave up and I I do regret that but my time there was very good because I was in theater there I was able to do some plays and um actually was getting cast as a freshman which was not common and so it was very encouraging um but I do regret and I have tried to go back to college oh really and I actually should try again because, quite honestly, every time I signed up for college before classes began, I got a job. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. But I should, hey, I can't believe I hadn't thought of this sooner. I'm to go back to work. I am applying for school. That's kind of a joke in the business. It's like right. if you try to leave town, you'll get an audition. Yes, right? that's very true. Right. That, that is a joke in the business. Yes. Like when you make plans, you know, then something happens. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I like that. I like that, though, actually. It's like, see, revelations happen on my shows. You never know. Maybe you have, maybe uh-huh. you have your, your ticket to your next gig. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, now, well, I want to talk about, you know, because you, you've been on some other soaps, of course, Sunset Beach and Life to Live and things like that. And, and I think recently, did you not remember you were on Young and the Restless? Oh, you know, it was such a short <laughs> stint and so long ago, but it was the best firing ever. It wasn't really a firing, because I was just on recurring. Yes. But the per- they were so sweet. They brought me in, and they're like, hey, you know what? You look too young to be his mom. Oh, how funny. And I'm like, Really, I'm too young. That's the best reason to not be right for a part when you're, you know, I was only in my twenties, but still, yeah. no, I was yeah. like, oh, I look too young. Okay, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the worst news I'd ever heard. No, it's not, not at all. That's like, that's good. I know. What I, I went on an audition once, and I'm actually, actually, I'm a grandfather in real life. Um, started oh started a little good. young. Started a little young. Um, when I was 18, I was 18 when I first started. I was, I was, I was 18. But um, I went to I went to audition for a role of a grandfather uh, who was in their forties, which is what I am in real life. And they said I was too young. <laughs> Looking, uh-huh. I go, but I am in real life. <laughs> like, 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 so it's kind of like you said. It was like it was a funny way to get kind of turned down. You can't really get yeah. mad at it. Not really. Right. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Um, so okay, so you played. Kristen Forster Dominguez kind of off. Every once in a while, I'll bring you back on. They'll say, come on in. You know. Yeah, not often enough. Yes. Every once in a while. I think it's about every five years now or so they call you in. Uh, Oh, gosh. Just about. Just long enough where I can kind of still remember where to go. Yes. Well, here's here's a question for you before we get to the actual specific storylines. 
How was it for you this last go around? Was it much different than it had been in the past? I know things have changed pacing wise and shooting schedules and was it any different for you? Well, un- unfortunately when I come back it seems to be for these, you know, big wedding scenes yeah. and stuff and those haven't changed at all. Oh, okay. There's still, <laughs> there's still all of us there. Um so yeah, that being involved in, you know, one of those scenes yeah. where like the entire cast is in the room. Yeah. And that felt pretty much the same. But I think what you're speaking of is, you know, when you've got a storyline more, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's different. Now yeah. what is it okay, back in the day you were paired up with several different people on the show, of course. But of course the one story that I took off was you and uh Tony, a character okay. of Tony, uh, with Paulo Benedetti and everything. And then of course the, the age storyline, the Africa storyline. Um, I thought it was very, I mean, for, for a soap, I thought it was very, it was very topical, of course. But I thought it was, very, it was very brave and very cool that they went that direction. How did you feel when you were playing with that, during that storyline? I, it's, you know, for me, that, that's the love of acting. It's like, yeah. you know, social issues like that. It was so great to be a part of it. And the, um, people that were reaching out, especially to Paulo, who was playing, you know, Tony, who yeah. had AIDS. Yeah. You know, he was really getting a lot of, um, you know, people reaching out to him that were affected by it. And, um, you know, nice to feel represented. Um, it, I, I loved being a part of it. And I love my thing. I such, like, kids are a huge passion for me. Yeah. And so when we got to adopt Zende, yeah. uh, and I think during that time is when Madonna was going and yes. adopting yes. a child from, I think she did from Africa as Yeah, well. from Malawi, yeah. Yeah, so it was just like, how cool to, you know, be a part of such a beautiful thing, like to use our pain that we couldn't have a kid because of his disease to mm-hmm. then give a home to a kid that lost his parents to the disease. It was just like beautiful and it was I think that's why for me I've hung on to that character for so long like every time they call I come back you know no matter what's going on because I feel like there's so much there and I I have such a loyalty to what we did yeah you got to affect change in the world wait how many times you do that as an actor I mean I mean that's that's a great thing you get to actually be involved in something that will affect change on someone's Uh life uh, someone watching yeah. in the world. The sto- yeah, the storyline won, like, Health Summit yeah. awards and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, there's been a few times where, you know, Paulo and I had heard about new AIDS research and yeah. um, reached out to Brad and been like, hey, did you hear? People are, like, living with this now. It's not the death sentence it used to be. They're having full lives. And, mm. um, you know, they've even just now in California passed the thing about AIDS-infected people can donate blood. And, right, right. You know, it's like there's so much more going on that we could bring back again and highlight. Yeah. But for some reason, he um, dropped the ball on that issue. And I don't know, maybe there was another writer there that it was their passion yeah. that's not there. I don't, yeah. I don't know the yeah. backstory, but it, it just kind of went away. Well, I think he did. I think, I think you guys did a great job. And I think, and, and I know that Bold and Beautiful, unlike some of the other shows, has an international following. So it got right. to it got to go everywhere. You got you got to it got to be spread out to you know because they always go as well as folks who who watch Bone Beautiful know Monte Carlo's a big place in Italy and other, but it goes all over the world. The show goes all over the world and and you're able to. This is a little bit of a sore subject for me. I have to tell you because I never went on a remote. You did it? Oh my god! I feel I feel very surprised. <laughs> yeah, we were Paulo and I. And Zende, yes. uh, Daniel Smith was playing him at yes, the time. Yes, time, yes. We were supposed to go to Italy, and the year was 2001. Uh, and 9, 000, uh, 9-11 happened. Yeah. Dang. And they canceled. I yeah. think that's like the only year they canceled the remote. Yes, I, mean, I know. <laughs> and, and then by the next year, they put us on recurring. So yeah. they weren't you know, taking recurring actors on the remote. So it was really... Um, really bummed about that. I was looking forward to 
to getting to go there. I've heard such great stories about their remote. Yeah, I'm sure. But but it's very cool that you guys. And what do you think? What do you think it was about the chemistry between you and Paulo? Like how? Did, why do you think that? In your in your words, working with why do you think that worked? I have to give a lot of credit to Paulo for that. To be honest okay. with you, because okay. first off, well, secret, I'm a little older than Paulo. Oh really? Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. And I, I love that you're surprised. No, I, 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 I really mean, you look great. Folks, go to, go to her Twitter. She looks great. I mean, we, I mean, that's just like, hello. I would not have guessed that. Okay. Um, but I was married and had a baby when yeah. I started. And Paulo was a little younger than me <laughs> and also single. And yes. But loose and carefree. And here he is with, like, me with my first infant. I mean, my son was six weeks old when I started the show. Oh, my God. So it was like, wait, was he six weeks? No, wait, I'm sorry, almost six months. Okay, six months, okay. I'm trying to think, it was like May, and he was born in, like, four months. Yeah. I don't know, he was young. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so here I am coming, you know, first-time mother with an infant, and I'm married to an LAPD SWAT officer, so ever since <laughs> anyone who finds... Anybody who finds that out and has to kiss me in oh. the film industry is always like, is there a red dot on my back? <laughs> 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 they have ears. Yes. Um, but with all that, Apollo was so respectful wow. and like, just always like, hey, Trey, how's the family? And, you know, just made it so comfortable where I never felt, um, you know, like, bad about this relationship and him and I have been good friends for 16 years now wow. where he keeps in touch just like even when you know in between so like when we come back on it's not like I haven't seen or talked to him I swear he would be like every six months he would be like wow. hey guys how's the family and just, yeah very nice guy that's very it's very cool that's, that's good to hear that it's very cool um, but we, 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 people wish you would come back on the show, of course. I see it all the time. The fans would love to have you on the show. Um, we're missing some female foresters, so to speak, uh, on there. And they, there's a few, but we'd like to have some more, and they would love to have that. I know people would love to have you on there. They tell, they tell me all the time. They love, they love to have you back on the show. Oh, you know, so. so nice. I, I really don't. I mean, was it something I said? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I would love, I, I have to tell you, I, it feels like home there. Yeah. You know, I go off and I do these films and I'm always grateful to get them and I love doing it. I'm doing some producing now and I love it. Yeah. But I even just went and visited somebody um, to have dinner the other day at the show. Yeah. And she was running behind taping and, um, and she's like, I'm so sorry I kept you waiting. And I'm like, are you kidding? I just love being here. Yeah. This is like. It's so comfortable. We just hung out in John McCook's room for like oh, an hour yeah. after she wrapped even, <laughs> and we're just like, you know, yeah. surprise, hey, John, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he's one of the funniest guys, though. I've not met him yet. I heard he's one of the funniest guys out there, Mr. Mr. McCookie. Yeah, he has some great um, lines and jokes and humor, but he's such a warm, you know, person. Like, he just looks at you and it's so authentic and listens you know yeah. how are you you know not just like hey how are you yeah yeah it's like i'm looking to make sure that your eyes represent your answer and you're as okay as you say kind of person you know i like that yeah it's your, it's your eyes oh, that's your answer i like i like the way you put that i never thought of it before oh. like that because people because you know in this business when you're acting of course you should be present if you're seeking it's obviously for your other actor fellow actors that'd be nice but like you said, outside of that, we are in Hollywood. A lot of times it's like, hey, 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 you know. Um, and it's like, and that's fine. But sometimes you want the authenticity of just like, yeah, how are you? Like, please uh-huh. tell me. I have, I'm not just saying that just to be polite. I'm going to ask you, how are you? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And your eyes match. Your, match your, oh, okay, I like that. I like that. It's pretty cool. Um, now, you also were, you wrote a book called Breaking the Perfect Ten. And, uh, and you were brave enough to talk about what what goes on in Hollywood, and it seems like suddenly it's out again, that everybody's talking uh-huh. about it again. And so let's talk about that. I mean, you were when you decide to sit down and write the book, 
did you always know you because you're talking about your, your your experiences you knew you were going to put some of these experiences in the book there was no question well i'm glad you asked because i never went seeking a publishing deal it came to me oh okay um mm-hmm. yeah i had worked with a group called movie guide okay. and it's a, it's a faith-based i'm a christian and it's yes. a faith-based um company and they do movie reviews so people can say you know oh yeah this you know is morally uplifting film or whatever and they do an award show every year and they asked me to present a couple times and I got to know Ted Bear who started it and he all of a sudden contacts me and says I have some people I think you should meet and so I showed up and met with them and they were publishers from Broadman Holman and they're like Ted tells us you have a story in you and that we think our readers might want to hear it. Wow. I was like, oh. Okay. What? And they're like, yeah, we're, we're, we'd like to know if you'd like to do a testimonial book about your... Because I came to Hollywood as the typical starlet, oh, you know, yeah, and yeah. there's probably 10,000 crossing the border as you and I have this oh, conversation. Of course. Seeking Hollywood validation and approval and willing to do whatever it takes to get it and women finding out that you get a lot more attention when you're naked. People tend to notice more. Mm-hmm. And all of those um, things where you're trying to fill that hole in your heart with any kind of attention you can get and validation and approval. And mm-hmm. um, and then through, you know, after, I don't know, maybe 10 years of that, I started, people started coming into my life, talking to me about God and faith and I went through a terrible divorce where my husband went to to jail for domestic violence, and I was just in a really, you know, they say sometimes you don't turn to God until God's all you got. Exactly, that's that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's where I became, and it's like, you know, um, I kind of turned my life over, and ironically, when I was doing the whole casting couch thing and hanging out with billionaire producers and thinking that was going to help my career. When I turned away from it, I became a Christian. I moved out of Los Angeles and was going to just quit. I went back to school. Mm-hmm. Um, I signed up to finish my, um, my college and my manager called Michael Bruno. I've been with him years. He Michael Bruno. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. Right. And he called me. He's like, okay, just go on one more. Karen <laughs> is doing a daytime soap, and you are perfect for it. And I'm like, all right, one more. You know, it's hard to quit. You know, you, yes, yes. it's almost like quitting smoking. Yes. And you're like, the next, just one more. <laughs> it's so, Aaron Spelling. It's Aaron Spelling. And it's Aaron Spelling. I mean, come on. Come on. So I went ahead and went, and then he calls, and he's like, you have a callback. And then I was, like, starting to get even more excited. Well, the difference now on this callback is I said a little prayer before. I said, God, if it's your will, let me do a good job in this audition. Okay. If it's not, I will go back to college. But if acting's what you want me to do, let this go well. You okay. know. And then a week later, Michael called. You have a screen test. He's like, but you probably won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> my forever optimistic manager. Yes, yes. But, his point was, I'd never been on a soap, and soap people like other soap people. And yes. he's like, everybody you're testing against has been on another soap. You're the newbie, but it's good to get a screen test under your belt because that's the start. Yes. We'll just use this as a screen test, and the next time you will have screen tested. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Lo and behold, I got the part. And I get the call, and he's like, so how far is the drive from Chino Hills to Los Angeles? And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, <laughs> 45 miles he's like you're gonna be making it a lot oh and uh, so that was that's how I got that what a great show I loved it I wish it lasted longer I loved it dude I loved and Aaron Spelling working for him was yeah. everything I had hoped it would be oh, good. he took care of his actors so well oh good um yeah NBC, I don't know NBC and him both what it was but the the job was really treasured and I Um, I'll never forget the day we got canceled um I was working out a scene with um, our director and we were disagreeing mm -hmm. and I'm like no I really think that Tess would do and I can't remember the exact scenario but we were you know kind of going back and forth quite a bit (laughs) and that's when 
Gary Tomlin comes in with somebody from NBC and makes the announcement on set, and I'm like, fine, do it however you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, we'll shoot it however you want. <laughs> Oh, that yeah. show was that was so was so good. Oh my god, I I did. I was so, I you know NBC soaps were really funny because back then I, before that there was Santa Barbara, which I was a big fan of, um, uh-huh. and Sunset Beach, and of course Passions came later. I mean, I mean there's some there were some really good ones that just didn't last as long. I mean Days of Lives, of course, is still on the the, the anchor of uh-huh. them all, but there's some, there were some really good soaps that were that had some really great actors, and including yourself. There were all these shows that were so good. I'm like. Sunset Beach was just really starting to take a foothold and yeah. gather a fan base and yeah. get some respect. And NBC was like, wait, if Spelling can create a new soap, why don't we create a new yeah. soap and have, you know, a bigger piece of the pie? Yeah. And, um, and that's, I mean, I was really bummed that, you know, passions didn't even last that long. I'm like, I, I should have just kept investing in Sunset. It, right. You know, why reinvent the wheel? Exactly. Um, exactly. I did a couple episodes on that too. Did you? Did you really? Oh my god, that's so funny. I know you're back. That was that was James E. Riley, who was who had done crazy work on Days of Our Lives. I know they want to capitalize on that, and I mean, it just uh-huh. it just but yeah, but but yeah. So but like so back. To, I mean, so but back to the, the the casting couch and stuff. I mean, that is something that we were talking this off off mic. How it's one of those those best kept secrets that aren't really secrets in the business, and there's like, like I said, there's jokes made about it and skits and things about the casting couch, but it is a real thing that is dehumanizing and demeaning, isn't it? Yeah, it is a real thing. And I I really am not 100% clear why now it's come so big. I don't know if it's because big name stars are saying it or, yeah. or what, but I'm glad that people are getting the attention. And, you know, my big thing, though, is like, I really want, you know, like I, I went on um, a radio show yesterday about it, and yes. I was with Kaya Jones, and she was, you know, we were both asked, like, yeah. do you think you ever get over it? And she was like, no, you never get over it. And I was like, I want to disagree. Yeah. I'm more of a, like, hope person than yeah. glass half, half full. And Me too, same way, just, yeah. Yeah, I was just like, you know what, I want to disagree. I mean, I, I think you do get over it. Of course, it's always... A part of you yeah. and it can affect you, but you can become a victor over mm-hmm. victimhood, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just want to empower women that it's like you can take your power back. Um, it doesn't have to define you. It will always be a part of you. And it can, you know, like just talking about it, you know, in detail on that show, I was, you know, somewhat emotional about it. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you can't thrive and have a good life and... I'm glad you. I'm glad you're saying those. Every, everything you just said, I'm glad you said because it is so true. There's you can find a way to put it somewhere in your life, in your past. You, you find you'll never forget. Obviously, you'll never forget. But you'll find a way to put it into your life history, so to speak. And just because when you talk about it, you get a little emotional about it. That's fine. That, that, that that's an emotion. But it, like you could, you, you could say, well, I went through that. I'm not gonna have any shame about it anymore or any guilt. You're gonna let all that go. And no, that was the thing that happened, or things that happened. But you can move on and, like you said, thrive as a person and know that that's wrong, and that will never happen again to you. And to share with people your experience, so it doesn't happen to them. I mean, turn it around yeah. so that it's something. Hopefully, again, that can yeah. change in the world. You know. Uh, exactly, and and you know, what? one of the things too I was trying to um, convey, and I like to convey, and. Some people take it as victim blaming, and I, I maybe have to work on my approach on it, but I had to change how I was putting yes. myself out there, yes. you know? Um, as a woman, I was inviting that kind of attention. Mm-hmm. I was prowling the rooms and looking for it and desperate for it, and there is some unspoken things that people can sense. And that's the energy I was putting out. I was, you know, crying for attention. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I attracted it. So when I started changing myself a little bit, too, I was less in those situations. Mm-hmm. And also more equipped when it started feeling like it was going 
down that way, knowing that wasn't the way I wanted to go anymore, I would now be more equipped and empowered, you know, how to handle it and cut it right off. And, you know, I've had conversations with, with men past, you know, when I was trying to turn things around at the beginning and Mm -hmm. I'd be like, look, let's just get it out there. I find you terribly attractive and I want you to know nothing's going to happen with that. Yeah. (laughs) That's as far as it goes. I will acknowledge that you are a beautiful man and attractive, but mm-hmm. that's going to be the end of it. Do you still want to work together? Mm. You know? You know, it's funny. I was told by my grandmother, may she rest in peace, two things. One, not all money is good money. And I thought she was crazy at first, but I've, I've realized later through some experiences she was correct. And number two, we call, almost kind of what you're saying. I know it's, it's the wording and kind of how you got to figure that out, but it's like, we call people into our lives. Uh-huh. And uh, sometimes it's a lesson for us to learn. Sometimes it's a mirror. Sometimes it's both. And it's one of those things where it, it's when you say that, some people, I know people have said to me, or oh, you're trying to say, I've made that person beat me. Like, no, that's not what I'm saying. Just saying that yeah. we call, we have certain energy to put out that we have going on with ourselves that we may attract certain people around us and we let them in. Uh-huh. Now, I said, once yeah, you start working on... Go ahead, yeah, please go ahead. No. No, go please, ahead. no, please, no, please. Yeah, that's kind of on that. Please, yeah, please uh, comment. Well, I was just going to say, if if we sit there and validate people as victims... Yes. I mean, you can validate someone's pain from it. Yes. But when we make them feel powerless, it keeps them feeling like a victim. I agree. And when you're just saying... When, when somebody's like, I had no... That was not in any part my fault I had no role in that you know okay I get it like no somebody should not cross those lines and that's on them but we only control ourselves right so all we can do is like change our behavior and see what we could do different to try and not get back in that situation Mm -hmm. yeah somebody crossing that line that is definitely on them but when I'm talking to somebody I'm like all I can tell you is what you're in control of Mm -hmm. And what you can try and work on to do different to help prevent that hopefully happening again, you know? And and just for folks, if it does happen, let's break the shame and guilt. Let's just break all that down. It happened. Like, just like you own it. It it happened. Right. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't good. It didn't make you feel good. You feel it. Feel all that and have that. But don't feel it. Say, now I know that happened. I'm going to move on from that. and, and, And hopefully... It'll be better for me later. Or, or that did happen, right. and it happened. It was part of my past. It did happen, and I didn't like it. And I'm not going to be shameful well, about it. Right, and that's like where people, like what they talk about forgiveness. Like mm-hmm. forgiveness, you have to forgive and move on because otherwise it's continuing to let it beat yes. you up. Yes. And so that's kind of what I'm getting at is like you have to forgive that person, you know, try and learn what you can from the situation either Mm -hmm. by helping others or you know empowering yourself to maybe um you know not fall prey to that again but if you um you know just kind of like lay down and die Mm -hmm. you're it's probably going to eat you alive for the rest of your life they say like forgiveness is like um taking the poison yourself instead of giving it to someone else. Yes. I forget how that there's, goes. Well, there's, there's and also the, well, the one that I love that changed my, the phrase that changed my life was on Oprah, and the guest said, forgiveness is giving up the hope the past could be any different. Right, yeah, stuff like that. I love that. Exactly. Because, because exactly, you can't, you can't go back and change it. I mean, what happened, happened. Whether you were a part of it or weren't, whatever, it doesn't matter. What happened, happened. But you should have to stay silent about it. You should have to feel shame-filled about it. You should have to feel guilty about it. You, those, you shouldn't feel any of those emotions. You know, and, and you can, like I said, you, you, you should be trying to live your best life anyway. And whether it's right. through God or spirituality or the universe, wherever it is, you should always be striving to live your best life. And this, but we're human. Yeah. Things happen. Um, and I'm glad folks are talking about it. Like I said, with you, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand why. I mean, I know it's Harvey Weinstein and there's stuff going on with that. But, like, suddenly now everyone's talking about it. Which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. So it's a great thing. I mean, I guess however reasons why it's out now all of a sudden, that's great. But I'm glad it's the whole Me Too campaign has happened with Alyssa Milano putting out on, on social media. Um, mm-hmm. It's just like it's it's great that it's finally I mean, it's coming out. That's good. I mean, hopefully this I will. Have to say, 
Yeah. I think so too. And but I first off, I have been a victim of legal definition sexual assault yeah. as a minor. First off, I want to say when we're talking minors, it's completely different than yes. anything like what yes. we're talking about. Yes. Those are you're a victim. Yes. You were truly an innocent victim when you're a child. I yes. mean, my first time was at 12 years old. Wow. And I, I very much differentiate, you know, as an adult to those. And I want to make that clear yeah. to anybody um, who has suffered as a child, as a victim of molestation or sexual assault. Yeah. Um, and I forget what my other point was. <laughs> well, no. Okay, so we're talking about adults. I said the Me Too campaign and, oh, right. and, and on social media. Okay, but then as far as adults, I I think that there is also so many different levels of it, and my fear is, as the mother of two sons, and I'm speaking to a man, so maybe you can help me with this, mm-hmm. it's like, what is the difference between sexual assault and flirting, just if you, a girl right. thinks he's cute or not, right. you know, it's like, because it's an unwanted advance, but these poor guys, at some point, you know, if a guy tries to make a move on a girl mm-hmm. and she rejects it, is that really sexual assault? I right. mean, I, where does, you know, just a, a move is now sexual assault. Like, where's the line? And not everybody is like everything. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. we're kind of getting fast and loose with the word. Yes, and I'll, 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 give, okay, I'll give you points on that because on social media, which I don't involve myself in these kind of things because it's just too much. Social media lends itself to all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm seeing now this open hatred towards men. All men. Right. And that's sort of happened. It's like, okay, well, that's not really, is that is that really, the male bashing, not all men do sexual assaults. Not all men are part of the casting couch. I mean, we're just and saying. And women do yeah. too. Right, and women do too. They do. And, I, and just to be full, my, my fans, let's full disclosure, I am a victim of a sexual assault. And so, well, as an adult. See, it's not just women who are Right. Involved. But right now, social media, you can't even, a man can't say anything. Apparently, it's like, you can't, you can't sympathize, you can't say anything. It's like, it's just, it's completely, mm-hmm. it's about the women. Which, I, like I said, again, women, speak your voice. I want you to say what you need to say, say it. But I'm curious, too, about the whole, now it's like, all men are just bad. All men are just bad. I'm like, well, I don't know about that part, so to speak. And we are raising sons. We should be teaching them, you know, respect for women, obviously. Um, and that this isn't okay. They should hear the stories. But I'm like... I want them to feel again. I want. I don't want to make them into victims too. Of just like, well, you're a man, so you're screwed. So you're a, you're yeah. a man, so you, you're you're inherently bad. Then so okay. I mean, like it's not. That's not. There are a lot of nice guys out there who would never, ever, ever do this and truly feel bad for women who go through it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I'm glad you kind of brought that up because I was feeling the same way. So I can't. So I haven't said anything. I'm like I I can't seem to say anything in words while being attacked. You know, fully yeah, because right now, identity, yeah, identity politics stuff. Yes. It's just terrible right now. It's like yeah. this is about sexual assault. This is not just a male female yes. issue. If you've been victimized by sexual assault, you know, yeah. and, and I think true sexual assault. I mean, a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, I know. They're like, oh, mm. one day, one day I was walking through a bar and a guy pinched my butt. And right. I'm like, anybody who walked through a bar may have gotten right, 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 like, <laughs> right. But, lived through that are you yeah. okay you know it's like come on i mean right. as grown adults sometimes you know you go to a club you're dressed in a sexy dress yeah guys would probably be thinking you're there for something right. if it was not pushed upon you past the whatever i'm not sure that that's what we're talking about we're talking about stuff that happened that was completely forced and threats made and you know complete a complete you know. abuses of power we're talking about complete yes. abuses of power someone is higher up than you on the chain and mm-hmm. forces themselves or threatens or propositions, propositions you for to get so to get you ahead or keep you down right. in a in an employment situation which it could be any industry it could be any industry at this point um, that to me that's the that's that, I, I'm like isn't that what we're talking about it's like it's that yeah. where someone yeah, you know, my first time wasn't even in Hollywood so there you go it was my very first job in Elizabeth, Colorado is a tree trimming company. Oh my God. And we went out to this field one time. We were working, and thank God, I, I can't even remember this kid's name. I hope I find him. He and I, he worked for the company as well. He's another guy from high school. I was, um, I forget, like, I, like, it's so many years ago. But I was there <laughs> something 
more in a secretarial type yeah. counting things and yeah. taking notes, whatever. Really, ha- I'm realizing now no reason for me to be there. It was all a ruse, apparently, because mm. the owner drove us out there and had him go out into this field doing whatever it was. And he came up, I was standing by the truck, and he came up, like I was, you know, the door open kind of in the truck, and he came up and just pushed himself behind me. Oh, my God. And laid into me, and I was just, like, frozen in fear. And it went on for a little while, and this kid came up, and God bless him, we're talking, like, young teen can't even drive yet. And didn't, like, oh, my gosh, what's going on, and run. He was like, hey, you guys ready? You know? Wow. And interrupted it. Wow. And Lord knows how far that would have gone. But, I, you know, it, it, you're right. It's every industry. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's frightening. Yes. It is frightening. It is. But, and it, you yeah. know, we we got to, as women, take our power. Not We can't have it both ways. Women are strong. Women can do everything yeah. men can. And at the same time go, oh, we're just victimized by men. Right. You can't have it both ways. you got to no. choose. Are you empowered or are you strong? Or are you a victim? You know? And you can be empowered and have this happen to you. I mean, there's not, there's no, there's no, you can do that. You can, no, it's okay to have things happen to right. you and then you get, and you work Thanks through them. Thanks for clarifying them. that. Yeah, and you can work through them and be empowered. Like, that's completely doable. So that, that's fine. You can do that. So I, I everything you're saying, I agree, I agree with everything you're saying. You're speaking my language. I, I agree with it. And I just, and I, I, I hope that my, and I, like you, I'm a hopeful person. I'm an optimistic person. I hope this brings, you know, not just awareness, but that maybe some real change will happen. So I think it's a couple more people who are being brought down to you from other things of this nation, other industries are happening. So maybe, maybe, maybe this will help with the patriarchal kind of thing we have going on in many industries. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll help change some stuff. Who knows? Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. And I, I want to differentiate like what you're saying. It's one thing, you, of course, no matter how strong of a person you are, mm-hmm. you can be victimized. Yes. And that's the difference. You're, but not be a victim. Yes. You know what I mean? And I, agree. I think that's more of a clarity that I was trying to make. Of course, like anybody can be victimized. I mean, some strong, powerful, oh, yeah. I know some of people I thought were invincible that have been killed. Yes. You know, so yes. I was just trying to differentiate. Like, you're right. You're not. We're on the same page. You're not on the same page. Um, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. You can. You can have things happen to you, but but you can also empower yourself and get through them and and work through them and and live through them. And not, yeah. Not yeah. stay. Maintain. Di- defining yourself as a victim, as a vulnerable, yeah. helpless person. Well, as I say, you can live through yeah. them, but not live in them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, just kind of that's 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 what that's what we're talking about. Um, just kind of, you can, you can work through it. So, I mean, I, and I empower every woman, every man, every, you know, you guys, we all can do this. And we, we can't let people treat us the way, any way they want to. That's the bottom line. Right. We should allow people to yeah. treat us however they feel like it. And sometimes things are not going to go your direction. You may have to work really hard. You may have to work hard. You may have to work 10 years in a business to get somewhere, but it's worth it than trying to get shortcuts and doing things that you might think that are less than savory for you because everybody has their own moral compass. You know, doing so that you really know deep down you don't want to do to get ahead, you should have to do them. You should just, I mean, just, yeah. you shouldn't have to, you know. And, and in the end, you can feel good about yourself in terms of, I got this role because I, I worked hard for it. I mean, there's, there's things you can do in life, I think, that you can, that's a good, I think it's a good well, lesson for everybody. Yeah, it's like what you're saying is we have to change how we define success. Yes, yes. You know? Oh my like, God, yes. It could be just being a good person. It's not being like winning an Oscar. Success That's so is, you know, true. having a nice family and helping in your community. And, you know, we have to change our definition of success sometimes, you know. Success could be also, and I'll do a long line with that. Success could be being a great character actor who just, who may not be the star of any show, but you work consistently yeah, for you years. you not get recognized in public, but it's right. okay. That's okay. But you're, because if you love acting, then you're happy because you're working continuously in the craft and the industry you want to work in, you know. Right. Um, and I see well, you and I both have seen it. I mean, time people people want to be stars. I know people just want to come mm-hmm. and be stars. That's something totally different. Uh, but I know folks yeah. who just want to act, or they just want to sing, or yeah. they just want to host. Even or, plays, you yes. know. That's, you're still doing it. You're still doing it. There's so many opportunities to do this, especially especially with here in L.A., New York City, no place you can do a lot of stuff. I mean, even in your own towns, you know, look up your own community theaters. There's things that are going on and. 
It's just, it's, so how you define success, and you're right with that, it's so true, and, you know, and I, and I, I'm a Christian myself, and I, and I, God walks you through stuff all the time. I'm always, okay, you take over, you tell me, what, tell me what's going on, and I listen, uh, I, I listen. joke, he's my agent. Okay, he's well, he's mine, too. Job, so I give him 10%. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, he, he guides me all the time, so I was like, yeah, you just, you guide me along, and we'll see what's going on, and. Because he knows what's good for me and what isn't, so I'm like, that's that's good mm-hmm. um, for me. But I think, but anybody, even if you're not Christian, but just say you just believe in spirituality or your other things, still, I mean, listen to your heart. Listen to your heart and kind of go move from there. That's always a great space to start, I think. Yeah. Let me start. Yeah, and I'm sorry for what happened to you. I didn't mean to skate by that, but you've also been oh, no, thank you. Um, victimized, and I, I'm sorry about that. And I am also sorry for the women who shut you down, you know, as a man yeah, or, yeah. you know, anything like that. We, we need to, we got to all share this planet, no matter what color, what gender, yes. what race, yes. you know, it's like, we need to stop with like, you know, just identifying people as certain things because of one characteristic of them. Everybody has struggles and across yes. the bear and a story and pain yes. and, you know. And I tell people all the time, I'm done with the pain Olympics. That's what I call it. Where I have you, sympathy fatigue. There, there you go. See, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, there's, there's no, just like, let, everybody is going through something. Let's support each other. That's all, that's all we got to yeah. do. Let's just support each other. Be good neighbors and support each other. That's all we need to do. Uh-huh. And that's all we need to do. Tracy, you're, yeah. you are the best. And like I said, we, I, I said, I, I feel nothing to say. I'm on the same page with you. And it's, and it's just been a pleasure and honor to talk to you and have you on my show. Likewise. You know, Let's so friends. that we're friends. We are now we're friends. Okay. I, we got we have to. I have to ride a horse with you or something at some point. Or see your horse or something. I didn't get to do something about horses because I just yeah, I love you horses. Know, Catherine, Catherine Kelly Lang and I both ride. Wow. And I remember when I got on the show at the beginning, there was a picture of a, on a horse on the mirror in the makeup <laughs> room, and I'm like, oh my gosh, whose horse is that? I ride, and they're like, that's Kelly. And wow. so she and I connected, and we'd go on rides together. She actually bought a horse from me. Oh and, wow. Um. Yeah, we both ride Arabs, so maybe right. we'll make it a joint, you know, podcast with you or something. That'll be that. Actually, I, I could talk. I could talk horse stuff all day long. I, mean, we, you know, I could easily could do that. And I think you know, fans would love it. They would love it. They would just they would eat it alive. Well, we, we should do that. We should That'd do that one cool. day. That'd be actually be kind of fun. We should do that sometime. That'd be a lot of fun. I'll talk horses. I'll love talk horses. Um, tell folks where they can where they can find you on social media if they want to talk to you. Well, you know what? I probably should have rethought my social media because my my name is so hard to spell. But <laughs> on, right? I should have just done like Tracy Milch or yes, something. But, um, it's for Twitter. It's at Tracy T R A C Y Melchior M E L C H I O R. So it's like choir with the I and the O switch. That's right. That's right. Um, and then uh, Instagram is at Tracy Melchior with underscore in between, first and last name. And Facebook is Tracy Lindsay Melchior. Yes. And your book is everywhere, isn't it? You can get it on Amazon or anything and get the book everywhere. It is on Amazon. It actually came out 10 years ago. Right. So I think it's, you know, it's not even really in print, but they still have some, some offers copies. up there on okay. Amazon. Okay. Wasn't sure because I think somebody asked me that actually about your book. When I was saying, "Oh, yes, the book." I said, "Yes, she has it." But I said, "Was well, out years ago." I don't. I'm not sure. So thought I'd ask. That's yeah, well, you know what? I love that it was out years ago, and I love that I'm on record that I'm not just like trying to throw myself no. into this mix now and come up with a story because it's relevant. You know, I I went on the record years ago. You sure did, girl. It. You sure did. So like, yes, yeah, she's not on the bandwagon. She was already talking about this stuff before. Um, so, yeah. so she's somebody you should talk to who, who could tell you what she knows, what she knows. So yeah. And how that goes and how, she, and how she's thriving from it. Now she's thriving from it. You are, you're thriving from it. Yeah. You're not living in it. So That's what me. I like the message I like, you know, of hope and, um, yes. you know, coming through stuff. Yes. You guys, the Bone Beautiful Rewind is on iTunes. It's on speaker.com. We have a Facebook page. You can go ahead and like us there. Share this interview with everybody you know. Well, serious, I'll be sharing this out and sharing this interview to everybody who needs to hear. It's a great interview. People need to hear this. And if you want her back on the show, tweet at, tweet at them at, you know, at, the, at the Bell Company. Tell them, we want Chris and uh, Forrester Dominguez back on the show. <laughs> and see what they say. <laughs> Let them know. You have, you have a voice. Fans, fans do have a voice. Fans really do have a voice. 
And sometimes fans do enough or are loud enough. Thing I've seen things happen on the soaps. They rule the world. They do. But just to clarify, none of my producer director salacious stories were within the soap industry. Right. You're exactly right. Okay. There you go. She's clear. It's all clarified. As she said, she loved being on the yeah. show. She loves work. Being there feels like home. So, but like, but the fan was saying, soap fans, you guys out there do have a voice, and you guys have affected change on your soaps sometimes. So if you want a character back on there. I say tweet at them, talk to them, see what they, see what they say. You get enough that you never know what's going to happen. Um, but Tracy, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.